Well, all this morning we've been helping you save your skin by helping you choose the right sunscreen for you and your family. And joining us now is an expert on this matter. Dr. Sarah Ferrer Brooker from Bold City Dermatology is here. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. It's summertime and a lot of us want to take part in going to the beach and being outdoors. And we do have to protect ourselves from melanoma and skin cancers because you're seeing a, a number of skin cancers going up, are you not? Unfortunately, every day we see skin cancer. I know so many um, middle-aged men, let's put it that way, and women as well, but especially men it seems like, who come in with cut noses and getting things lasered off. What's going on there? Is it just because they didn't take protective action when they were younger? Well, your skin has memory and the damage starts from when you're, when you're young. Yes, one blistering sunburn can over double your chance for a melanoma later on in life. Okay, yeah. and so the question is, what kinds of sunscreens are best? I guess it's the one that you're gonna use every day, right? The one that you like and the one you use every day, 100%. 100%. Some people do have sensitive skin though, yeah. and they wanna make sure that they don't break out when they use it. What kind of ingredients should they be looking for? Because I know when I use sunscreen, I do get pimples on my face. I also struggle with acne myself. I see it every day in clinic, and so one of the very just easy tricks and tips when you're shopping is to find a product that's number one, non-comedogenic, uh, which means it won't clog your pores. And so that's like one very easy thing to look for on a label. And it'll say that on a box? Like, do yep. one of these say that on there? Yep, exactly. So right here, this one says non-comedogenic. It's and very so, small. <laughs> it's very small, and, yes. And so I would know that, <laughs> you know, that one would be a good uh, choice for an acne prone person like myself. Okay. Uh, yeah, also you want to ensure you have adequate protection. Sometimes treatment plans that we put people on for acne can make your skin very sensitive, drying, irritated, or either, even photosensitive. So uh, making sure you have broad spectrum coverage, so making sure you, um, on the label it says broad spectrum, UVA and UVB protection uh, uh, is a good tip. Uh, a lot of people want to know, is it okay if I use a spray sunscreen over a lotion? Does that really matter or the waxy stick sunscreen for my children? I prefer that my patients use creams or lotions because they are able to put on the adequate dose that's recommended on your skin. So sometimes the sprays, it's not until you're out and about uh, and you, it's almost like a last minute thing. But if you're able to, before you go out uh, and go out to the beach or have your day out in the sun, uh, you're able to apply your sunscreen 20 minutes before you're about to go do something where you'll perspire, get wet. It gives it time to absorb. Uh, you're able to layer it on so you can you know, protect all the parts of your skin that is to be exposed. Uh, and I think sprays are good for touch-ups, but ideally being able to put it on in a cream form or a lotion form to ensure you've covered all the places um, is, is good practice. Okay, well thank you so much for being here. So we're gonna look for non-comedogenic yes. so we don't have those Broad breakouts. Spectrum. Yes. Thank you for being here. Yes, and pleasure. have a wonderful, safe summer. You too. Thank you. We are helping save your skin all morning long. Ahead at nine o'clock, do, does sunscreen expiration dates matter? How you can make your sunscreen last and when it's time to throw that bottle away? That's coming up at 9.15, so stay with us for that.